We got Andre Ull back here on the program. He's going to be taking on Julio Arce at UFC Fight Night on July 24th. Andre, what's up, man? How's it going? Uh, you know, pretty well. Everything's going solid. You know, I'm in the beginning of that uh, weight cut life at the moment. Well, that's good. They're glad I'm not getting you at the end of the weight cut because I know that's uh, not, not the most pleasant time to, to grab you. But first, let's talk about uh, Julio Arce. A little bit surprised getting this matchup only because I know Arce was supposed to fight at 135 before, but he's not. I don't think a lot of bantamweights know that he is fighting in that weight class now. He hasn't fought in that weight class in a while. Uh, yeah, that's why when I end up here, I believe his last fight that he fought at 135 was against Brian Keller. That's right. Yeah. yeah, so uh, it was pretty actually pretty interesting because my brother had a conversation at the gym uh, like a few days ago, and the person that actually works at the gym knew who Julio was, and he was like, oh, he's actually coming down to 35, so it was kind of like one of those little awkward shock moments of, oh, no one even knew. So either or, like I stated, uh, before because I was planning on moving up anyway so if you would have took me at 45 it would have happened if it's at 35 it's still happening so regardless of the situation if he ends up changing his mind we can go to 45 so that's just how I feel about it interesting so do you see yourself going to featherweight after this fight or you just sort of you know take it every fight and see how it goes uh, basically take it how, how it ever, or how it goes yeah, I, th- I think I butchered uh, saying that, but you know what I meant. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Th- th- there you go. It's a little early for me here as well. Um, what did you learn the most from that last fight against Chris Gutierrez? Uh, obviously a really tough opponent. What did you take away the most from that? Um, one, I already knew Chris was always a gamed opponent, and that's just one thing about him. And he got me, so I'm basically 0-1 in uh, catch weight. So obviously, again, I have to go jump back into the catch weight life and uh, redeem myself and basically change the ratio where it's like at least 2 and two to one you know but uh definitely uh what i learned from it is stick to my a game regardless of the situation don't end up trying to buy burden try to play um uh, devil's advocate in a way in the situation for that you know so yeah. my thing was i ran in try to do jits and and don't get me wrong my jits is awesome and i feel like my jits is better than chris but at the end of the day it ended up dropping me into a hole where i want to finish the fight a little bit earlier than when you know instead of like pushing it on um, to the next round. Yeah, uh, that makes sense. Um, and it seemed like you got plenty of notice for this fight, right? Not like a short camp. It seemed like you got a lot of time to make the 35 limit. Oh, yeah, definitely, definitely. Probably the only time I ever actually had a full, full camp. You know, it's like argument from like the whole corner that everybody was happy for me actually. Like, oh, yeah, you got to find a full camp. But me, I am the type that likes to stay busy and always staying busy. It's the way to go, you know, and make sure that you're firing on all sequence, and that's how I am. Let's talk about Julio, 16-4 and four record. I think people forget he actually has a win over Dan Ige that was, you know, years ago, but that's still a really good win sort of looking back now. How do you feel like you match up against him in this fight? Um, to be told, like, I haven't really did my homework on it, on, on, uh, on, on my opponent. Like, I left that with all my corners, and obviously our mindset is that I can beat anybody and everybody at this weight class and at 45. So so how it looks at it, it's just me stick to my game as in what I know best and do what I do best. So how I fit with them, it's I know that I can beat them. And yeah. that's what's going to be uh, placed on the table or in the, in the middle of the cage in front of the world. Who have been some of the main training partners for this camp? Uh, definitely, I've been moving with my boy Jalen anytime that he's uh, available, but been a lot of wrestlers. Just factors in everybody in uh, Bantamweight are like super wrestlers, you know. So so it's been like a lot of wrestlers. Like I even uh, been traveling over there to Ian Butler, which oh, is nice. a Bellator. Uh, yeah, I know Ian quite well. I played video games with him in his one of his Bellator fights. We played uh, video games in the hotel. He beat me at Goldeneye. Oh, snap. That's what's up. I yeah. didn't even know he's a gamer. Ian's one of the nicest like, guys I've ever it. met. What, what, a, what a great guy that is. Uh, definitely. is definitely a, a awesome person, man. Just one, his uh, his team and his, you know, everybody's just in how inviting and friendly they are. Granted, after they're, like, beating me down in wrestling and everything. <laughs> and then, right. yeah. then, you know, we take pictures and stuff after. But I've uh, been learning a lot from them. And, then, you know, just the uh, factors in my gym that everybody's already suited and booted. And also getting sparring in at uh, San Diego at uh, um, uh, and the Mick Queen. So, yeah, cool. uh, basically been set, set and settled for not just this fight, the futures fights, and all fights. So it's all about improving um, my wrestling scrambles and everything. Um, and you just said there the cuts just starting, right? So just sort of you know kind of getting in that mode now, and then cut all the you know the bad stuff out, and then get down to thirty five. Imagine everything's going according to plan, at least at the beginning of this. Oh, definitely, definitely. Can't argue. 
Um, granted, I've been like really thirsty because how hot it has been out here. Oh, I know. In California. E- even here in Vancouver, we had a heat wave like last week. It was so crazy because like oh, it doesn't oh. normally get this hot here, but something's up with the weather, you know. Oh, yeah, definitely. It's, it's mad or, uh, you know, the devil's over here farting um, free. Pretty much, yeah. That's what it feels like. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, so, yeah, it's over here. But at the end of the day, uh, granted, as of how hot it is, the the weight, water weight's definitely falling off easy. So just uh, got to end up adapting and moving with it, you know, and yeah. being well prepared for Vegas. Good stuff. Uh, who's going to be in your corner for this fight? Uh, it's going to be my brother, cousin, and Coach Tony. So, uh, same as last, uh, this one, uh, you know, we're going to end up putting everything together and make sure I knock, uh, knock out my opponent, Julio. How's this fight playing out on July 24th? Uh, I can picture it since I know that he's probably, actually, I won't sit there and stay. It depends on how he's going to end up floating. If he ends up gun blazing as in, Hey, he wants to fight first round, but I have a feeling he's going to end up kind of pacing himself. So he's going to kind of like move away from me. And that's just how it is. So I say second round. So it's a coin flip of how he's moving forward or uh, or he's going to try to take his time. So if he takes his time, second round, if he comes with it, then first round. Imagine the plan after this fight is just keep active, try and get maybe one, two more in this year. Is that kind of what you're looking at? Uh, yeah, definitely. Definitely uh, one more. Um, and the goal is to uh, get at least Uriah or Dominic Cruz. Okay. And I know like, a lot of people are talking about moving up on ranks, but also I know I end up understanding how the strategic movement are getting moved around here. It's safe, safe bet, easy money for their mindset, and I already know that I'm going to be that exciting one that they will actually say yes to. So uh, I feel like uh, it's going to be one of the two legends. So you got uh, the post fight speech uh, planned out. If you win this, uh, you oh, know, calling yeah. out both of them, Ric Flair style, like uh, like like Michael Chandler Woo! did. There you go. 100%, just like cool. Mike Chandler. I, I end up messing with that. So, yeah, so 100% on one, one of those two. I already have a plan. So my mindset is after this fight, I have one more for the end of the year. And then, you know, start uh, 2021 with the bank or 2022 with a bank. No worries. Even I get confused with the years because of yeah. the whole pandemic and stuff. Oh, it's COVID and keep track. Yeah, exactly. Uh, before we go, what did you get up to for 4th of July? I know you got the fight coming up, but did you get up to anything yesterday? Uh, just, just bonded with my boy. Uh, you know, and my lady. So we had like family moments and family times, a lot of driving, trying to find sushi. Uh, like every How's the sushi in California? Probably pretty good, huh? Oh, yeah, definitely good. Definitely good. Uh, everybody out here that makes sushi, they know what they're doing. You know, so 100% like, so if you're ever out here, go ahead and grab yourself a sushi. I, I feel like you can't go wrong with any of them. It's like a Pacific thing. Like out here in Vancouver, we have really good sushi as well to the point of where like I think I've become like a bit of a sushi snob where like, you know, I'm not going to I'm not going to have the store bought sushi. I'm not going to have, you know, the sushi yeah. that you get at some place that doesn't necessarily sell sushi. It's got to be like an authentic, really good place type thing. Right. So. Oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely. The person that it's, I feel like they put uh, it's where you're from or where you're at. It's about who puts the love in it. And I'm, I'm telling you, and I believe Vancouver, since it's by, like you said, by the uh, Pacific uh, line, a. They end up knowing what they're doing. Exactly. And you know what you're doing, man. This is a great interview. Appreciate the time as always, Andre. Uh, July 24th, it is UFC Fight Night. Anyone you want to thank, any sponsors, any social media, I'll give you the last word. Uh, you know, it's Team Yule, as always, everybody. Uh, shout out to Mike for making this happen, for uh, being the PR. Put One of the best in the business, happen. man. I love that guy. Yeah, nothing but love. Matt Dodge, you know, always uh awesome manager and he is always on my side and always pushing forward for me to being the best that i can end up being so thank you um so yeah so everybody nothing but love if especially if you supported me and now all the ones that are betting against me <laughs> you know i'm just letting you know you're definitely going to be losing a lot of money with a smile and my smile is definitely going to tell you next time you better bet with me there it is 